for another episode of Curtain Call Conversations with Samantha Lane and Barb Jonga, who are the creative team behind Charlie Cook's favourite book, which is currently playing at the Little Angel Theatre in London. How are you both? Very well, well, thank you. Very well. Good, good, good. How is the show going so far? I know it's already open. Um, what are the what are the reactions like? Oh, well, so I've just actually come from a show this very second uh, and it was our first school show. So we opened uh, with our first previews over the weekend, which was all family audiences. But this is the first one with a totally schools audience in. And it was just really, really interesting to see the difference in reaction. I think our family audiences are a little bit more reserved because they're with their parents. But the children today from the school were just absolutely kind of, you know, kind of shouting out where things were and just really, really um, having an absolute kind of whale of a time it's really lovely um that's not in any way discrediting our family audiences they seem to be loving it so far as well but it was just very very interesting to see how kind of the makeup of an audience can be so different um when it's entirely full of children compared to uh to one that's families yeah, I yeah. Mean, the families have loved it and the what's interesting is that the children are so absorbed they're um I mean the pace of the show is so fast isn't it Sam you you're yeah. in one scene and you're out of it and then you're in another and something's transformed you know the wall is transformed into this or the lamp is transformed into that puppets come out from everywhere and that is there's no space for people to go oh they're just driving it's like a train it's exciting yeah so so tell us the story of charlie cook's favorite book it's obviously um a julia donaldson book um who is a fantastic children's writer so tell us the the actual story well uh the story um uh that julia wrote is actually kind of um it's more like a sort of series of books within a book within a book so the, the concept is that charlie book opens his a book and uh, it discovers a story which the very first story happens to be a pirate story um, and through reading that discovers another book which takes him into another story which happens to be about Goldilocks and the Three Bears so it's 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 kind of uh, and you know and, and with clever as Julia always does with her clever use of rhyme it um, kind of segues into that next book and that next story but obviously for a show that kind of didn't quite have uh, enough of a narrative arc uh, because otherwise we'd just sort of be um, presenting a series of it, you know a, a scene after a scene after a scene so our adaptation is a little bit different from the book and we've added a character called Izzy who's Charlie's younger sister and um well, actually I don't know if she's younger or older a uh, sister anyway um and um uh she uh she is a bit more of a reluctant reader so she doesn't enjoy reading in fact she finds it boring as a song right at the beginning about how she would rather do all sorts of things like uh you know run around outside and and, and play games rather than uh, have her head stuck in a book and uh through various different games and play Charlie and his mum managed to kind of um kind of take on a bit of a u-turn without being too much of a spoiler but by the end of the show she is uh she's loving books just as much as her her brother does so it's, it's kind of given it that arc which is is you know is different i think if you're if you know the book well you there is a there, there is a dimension to our stage production that's a little bit different yeah yeah and barb i mean you're um you would you adapted the story and you composed the music and lyrics i mean where where do you start with with composing music for um you know a, a great children's book like this i mean what what's your what's your starting point well when we start working together sam sam has often got a very clear vision excuse me of how theatrically she wants something to work and that's incredibly helpful yeah and and then we'll start to look at what the scenes are. And, and generally, um, I or Sam will go, that's a song. And, and then I kind of think about um, what would make a song interesting. So, for example, Goldilocks mm -hmm. is a really well-known story. So I thought, what would it be like if, if because the story is about the bears, what do the bears sing the story? How do the bears feel about Goldilocks? Well, how the bears feel is that there's somebody who just comes in their house and starts messing about. And that's that's incredibly rude, actually. So that's what the song is. Ah. So I tried to find like a little launch pad mm -hmm. of an idea um, that, that will help us. And, and then that I know that Sam will create something visual out of that. 
So I suppose um, what's great is that we've worked together before now mm. on several projects. And because of that, she knows what I can do and I know what she does. And and I know that we're both growing and learning all the time. And we both come in with, with new information. Yeah. And because of that, um, that, you feel very secure. You know, I feel very secure to come in with a song where half the song is the crocodile saying yum, yum, yum. Right. Because he's <laughs> eating books and books are really yummy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's wonderful for kids. I mean, what what attracts you both to children's theatre? Well, without children's uh, theatre, you haven't got adult theatre, have you? Because mm -hmm. where do you go to theatre from? Yeah. You have to you have to learn to be in a space with everything, with with anything, with theatre or art or music, you know, mm. somewhere somebody's got to take you there, cinema. Um, and um and that's a really that's a really interesting challenge, I think. Yeah. 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 I think for me it's um it's very much uh, uh like there is no more uh, honest an audience than an audience full of children. So if you've created something that they're not enjoying, they will let you know. Yeah. They've got something to say about it. They will let you know. And so I actually think, you know, we, I work in an industry where often uh, children's theatre is seen as the sort of um, stepping stone to the proper work, the big work, uh, and, uh, you know, the more challenging work. And actually, I kind of, I really, I feel I, like I defy that um, attitude. I think making work for children is incredibly complex because actually um, a three-year-old is very different from a five year old to an eight year old to an 11 year old so actually trying to make something that um can sustain uh you know that kind of wide age range over a period of time and um uh, and to get and and to by, by just by looking at them knowing what they think and feel about it I yeah. think that's an incredibly you know an incredible challenge and but I really I really personally love that challenge you know it's like I I sort of one of my I spend a lot of the preview period uh, with when I'm opening a show looking at what the children are doing is when are they what are they doing are they restless at the moment um, and I think you know with adult theatre most of that is about kind of noting the actors and what are the actors doing but for me it's absolutely oh okay so that pet that isn't working because you know they're getting a little bit restless here or uh, do you know what I mean really right. really kind of using them because they are more they are the most honest uh, yeah. the, um, <laughs> audience you're, that you're ever going to get if they don't like something they'll let you know yeah absolutely on Sunday a little boy stood up and said I want to be Charlie Cook oh I want wow. to be Charlie Cook yeah, well that's your job having, done, watched, isn't it? <laughs> having watched it you know I want to yeah. be Charlie that was just great yeah that's so wonderful and as you say they do give their honest opinion um I would say um so you're Sam your artistic director at the Little Angel Theatre um I mean mm -hmm. where where is your love of theatre come come from um, so I guess, I mean, unlike the children who come to see the shows that I uh, put on here, I I was, I didn't have theatre as part of my life as a young child. So I, the very first thing that I saw was a TIE show. Um, it's called Too Much Punch for Judy. And I was 13, maybe 14. And it came into uh, my school. And, um, uh, and I remember it was four actors, four chairs, and um, the dinner ladies were kind of setting up and there's all sorts of clanking and school kind of rigmarole hap happening around uh, but I watched the show and um, it brought me to tears and it was just absolutely incredible and I think the thing that I was kind of that was so mind-blowing about it for me as a 13 year old was like this is just four people and four chairs no elaborate set no you know lighting it was just four people and four chairs and it was the most incredible moving story and um, I think from that point on I'd always like you know kind of I always like being in the school plays and, and doing drama you know where possible at school but hadn't really yeah. um hadn't really seen very much and and after seeing that and I was kind of this is this is somehow I want to do something like this in some way um and so I think yeah really for me it was about you know I'm obviously going to see all sorts of uh, forms of theatre and the uh, children and grown-ups but I do um I think it was that that piece for me that was really like yeah that this is this is it if that can do if that can really kind of touch somebody um who's never experienced theatre before then there's a power in this form yeah oh, for sure 
That's wonderful. And Barb, I mean, your career has been quite varied. I mean, you're an award-winning international performer and recording artist, composer and lyricist, um, and Olivier nominated. I mean, that, that's a great CV. Well, we're both, we're, we're, we're all Olivier nominated for The yes. Smartest Giant, which Sam and I made with Fiery Angel and Sherry Conan and Kate Bunce. I mean, it was the show that was nominated. So that was really brilliant, actually, for us all to be a part of that. And, yeah. and tremendous for Little Angel, because... Um, there we there we were suddenly you know in a pond with very big fish yeah. and um, but and our, our little fish was shining and golden yeah. and just as sparkly and that was fantastic that was really fantastic um but yeah yeah uh, i have had a very um, varied career <laughs> and where does where does your if love like to call come it from <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, I haven't, it, none of it has any sense or rhyme to it. Okay. I didn't set out to do any of it really. Yeah. Um, okay. I just, I just have gone where, I've gone where the wind blew me and, um, and the wind blew me into children's theatre yeah. um, quite, quite by chance. And then I took an idea to Little Angel Theatre um, and it was just, it was an idea on two, two sides of an A4 okay. and the then artistic director said, we'll make this. And um, and we did. And since then, I've I've worked at the Little Angel on and off. And, and that's been a, a huge and beautiful part of my life. And I, I, I want to cry just saying it oh. because um, it's it's so it feels like such a gift yeah. to spend yeah. your life doing this. Yeah, it feels like a great gift. Actually, I feel incredibly fortunate. Yeah, I mean, doing something that you love is never yeah. classed as a, a job or a or a chore. So, you know, you, you obviously feel that way. Um, with regards to timeline for a show such as Charlie Cook's favourite book, I mean, how long does it take you from the very start of saying this is what we want to adapt and getting it onto the final um, sort of performance level? I mean, how long does all that take? Um, I think we probably started this journey about two years ago Barb was that is that about right um in, and that was it you know but that's kind of very much um us kind of saying this is a this I think this could be a show approach the um publishers to kind of check on the licensing of it and if it was available to make into a show so that's kind of you know from the very very seed of an idea um uh and then once those rights were granted um you know again such a difficult thing to quantify because obviously we're all you know we're all doing other things as well alongside yeah, it sure. um you know we'd have a we had a, a few writing days where we put together um uh, our first version of the adaptation we then took that in to um work with some performers for three days to kind of look at the shape of that and we brought uh Maya, who is the puppetry designer into that space as well just to see um how we kind of thought the conceit of the puppets might work and off the back of those three days we decided to kind of shift the direction of the the show slightly so we did some more writing um and then uh and then sort of sent a, a final draft off for julia and axel to, to sign off in terms mm. of um because uh, that's you know because you know we are taking somebody else's work and adapting yeah. that for the stage and so getting uh so it feels very very important that we feel uh, that, that that what we create feels true to what they have tried to create within the picture book, but also that we've got can bring our own um, kind of creative ideas to to that piece as yeah. well. So there's a lot of collaboration and backwards and forwards with um, um, with um, kind of Axel and uh, Julia's people as well. So um, yeah, so all in all, on and off, a kind of a, a, a over a two year period to get it to the stage. Sure. Okay. And and you you have a particular vision at the very beginning of of how you want it to look visually on a stage. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, when it's a book adaptation, I feel quite strongly that it needs to feel like the book. So it is very inspired by Axel Scheffler's illustrations for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I think rather than sort of being a very literal. Uh, we we wanted to, to to take this idea of the conceit of the joy of reading and how um uh and and, and what uh, and ways into and out of books i guess and so quite literally a bit of a spoiler alert i suppose but you know the the puppets emerge from books mm. which is obviously quite different to the actual book itself so um 
uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's about really thinking about creative ways of trying to be true to the original form. Um, mm. I, I, I think I think we've done it. But, you know, <laughs> I think that's more for the audience to decide, really, because uh, but, you know, I'm really I'm cre- incredibly pr- proud of uh, what we've created as a team. And it's um, got a really talented bunch of performers, um, you know, who, as Barb said, they don't stop. They are um, mm. sort of 55 minutes nonstop. Um, yeah, they, yeah um, uh, they're going to be exhausted <laughs> by the end of this run. <laughs> they're yeah. joy filled they're full of joy it's beautiful to watch them they're full of joy yeah um i think it's also that that a book is something that you read uh, a, a picture book mm-hmm. with rhyme is something that you read in what 15 minutes mm-hmm. um or maybe and, three or maybe three <laughs> <laughs> if you're a busy parent yeah <laughs> and we have to keep people occupied in their seats um for 45 to 60 minutes yeah. so there has to be that we have to find the depth if you like mm. um the emotional impulses and and in charlie cook there's a lot about play and imagination um and i think sam's really brought that out in terms of the way that she's staged it which is absolutely brilliant she's a wonderful wonderful director mm. and and so you you see this the, the the things that are words on a page have to be actions and have to be uh, and have to be emotions and and and, and obviously the songs feed into that mm-hmm. but that has to come from the inside of the book so it's kind of like we we might look at the at the pictures and go well how how does because in the book the the house becomes the things so we can't do that we have to find another way of doing that so yeah. you know it's it's about it's about um digging into the book almost you know almost viscerally to yeah. pull out the things that are there but we've got to pull them out because we have to make them real we have to make them real yeah yeah i mean i, I remember going to see um a julia donaldson um production the name escapes me now that's really bad but it was a long time ago my daughter's 17 now so she was only about six at the time so it was was quite a while ago and that struck me at the time how you felt like you were actually looking directly into the book I mean it's so clever the the way that the staging is done um, especially these days with with the technology that's available Um, yeah I mean it's it's such a wonderful wonderful art form isn't it really Um, do you have a favorite song from the show Barb? Oh, no, I have different ones every day. Sometimes, yeah, I have different ones every day. Because when I'm working on something, they just go round and round and round and round in my head all Mm. the time. Um, But, um, yeah, at the minute, the crocodile's winning, but he hasn't, he he wasn't winning the other day. Okay. Different ones will win on different days. Yeah, oh, it's so lovely. And then, Sam, do you have a particular... Julia Donaldson, I mean, you've worked with Julia Donaldson before, obviously. So do you have a particular book that maybe you've not adapted that you've got your eye on? Um, I do, but I'm not going to say that <laughs> because <laughs> I'm trying to get the rights for it right now. OK, um, <laughs> But enough. I do, I mean... To- I mean, in all honesty, the the books that um, I the, the shows that I have adapted of hers are all my favourites. So, yeah. so and Barb and I have worked on um, we've worked on uh, the Singing Mermaid, Mermaid together. We've worked on the Smarter Giant, Smarter Giant in Town. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've worked on this. Um, I've also adapted and, and worked on a, a show independently of Barb called The Flying Bath, which was one of my kids' favourites as well. Um, so I, you know, I really. Um, uh, I think she's just got a really uh, beautiful way with words and loves yeah. and, and I love the kind of uh, the simplicity and the narrative around them you know I think all of her books are great but I, I think I, I'm sort of I'm working through my top <laughs> top ones at the moment um, <laughs> but I think you know I just it's just um, uh, you know I, I think Barb and I have worked together I think it's our fifth production uh, now and I think we've just kind of created a bit of a shorthand in terms of the way that we work together which does mean um, sometimes it's hard to answer the questions you're are asking us about how we work together because it sort sure. of feels quite fluid and yeah, um, yeah, just sort of something that we've <laughs> we've worked um, yeah we've kind of found a way that really feels like um, you know it's, there's a real honesty in the room like if if 
Barb doesn't like something that I'm doing, she'll say, and and not vice versa. And we've kind of just we've just found a way to um, work that I think is really. I mean, it's just a very very joyful collaboration, and um, yeah, it's been it's been a joy working on Charlie Cook as well. Sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, has. Yeah. I'm in tomorrow seeing it, and I can't oh, wait. Oh, good. Oh, that's so lovely. Do you get to do you get to see it out on the tour as well? I mean, do you visit the different locations now and again? Yes. Yeah. Just to yes. check off. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's going to over seventy venues, so not yeah. all of them, but we will go <laughs> and see a few of them. Um, and um, we are co-producing the, the show with the Lowry and the Rhodes Kingston as well. So um, yeah. we'll probably, I'll almost certainly go to our co-producing venues to see it as well. So, um, but yes, we will go out to see it, but obviously not to all seventy venues because no. <laughs> the rest of our, our jobs to do. But yeah, it'll be yeah. really nice to see it in 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 different spaces. It's, yeah, yeah it'll be exciting. Oh, that's great. And, I mean, I mean it's... different in different locations because the audience changes, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, of course. That's a yeah. wonderful thing. You know, an Islington audience is a thing. And mm. uh, and and a, an audience in Exeter is going to have a very different view. Yeah, yeah, no, it's nice to get that's a different fun. reaction. Yeah, a different reaction to wherever you wherever you disappear to with, with the tour. It's always wonderful. So it's running at the Little Angel Theatre in London until the 3rd of February, I believe. Um, and yep. then, as we say, it's off on uh, in February is the first sort of stop on the tour in Aldershot. And it's touring up until, if I get to the bottom of my list, to August in Kingston at the Rose Theatre. So I wish you all the luck in the world with it. I'm sure it's fantastic. I will, if I can, pop and see it um, because it sounds joyous. Um, and good luck. Oh, for please do. You do in the future. Thank you. Thank You're you so much. Okay, take care, Bo. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.